Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you once again for joining in our daily broadcast. My name is Reverend Father Evaristus Abu, and I present to you the Liturgy of the Word. Today is Tuesday of the fifth week in ordinary time. Today we see Solomon in the temple virtually taking the position of a priest and this prayer he prays before God in the temple is what is called the prayer of dedication. Solomon says, O oh God, even the heavens are not enough to contain you. Would you dwell in this house which I have built? Solomon was begging God, literally begging God to come down and live in the temple so that when he prays, God will hear. And when the people of God, when the, the Israelites, anyone who comes to pray in that temple, his or her prayer will be heard and their sins will be forgiven. This is a king, Solomon, who normally would be consigned with affairs of state, would be consigned with administrative issues. Here he was in the temple praying a prayer of dedication. I, I asked myself while reflecting on this first reading, where were the priests? Or just as uh, during the time of Saul, we had Samuel doing all the priestly functions, doing all the prayers and everything. At the time of David, we had Nathan. At the time of Saul, at this dedication, we do not seem to hear the mention of a particular prominent priest who normally would be saying this prayer of dedication. However, the point I'm driving at is that the fact that we are leaders in, uh, civil, in the civil space, the fact that you are a king, the fact that you, are, uh, you work with government or you are a government official, does not mean you will throw away your religious background. In my little experience, I have seen Catholics, when they get into position of power or authority, they don't use their position to promote the Catholic faith. And this is very sad. All of a sudden, we become atheists or we become indifferent entirely to religion. When we find ourselves in position of leadership, in position of authority. This is something that we Catholics, we need to look into. Sorry, I'm mentioning Catholics because I am a Catholic. For every Christian who finds himself or herself in the social space, in a place, in a, in, in, in a place of authority, in a place of power, you do not know how long you are going to be there. You do not know how many lives you could touch if only you decide to take up your religion and promote your religion. Use your office to promote your religion. It is sad because I have, I have, I have had to experience Catholics in position refusing to even, even assist the church, not in terms of financial assistance now. I mean, Use your position to promote policies that would benefit the church later. You find even in some situations where there are schools that were taken away from the church. There were schools taken away from, from Christians many years ago. Now a Christian is in charge. Return the school back to the mission. Correct the error that was made. No way. You find Christians who teach in public schools in that environment teach catechism, teach morality. It's not all about money. Your contribution to the church shouldn't be a Sunday, Sunday contribution. You come to church and then you drop off at three. No, no, go beyond that. Go beyond that. 
see how you can use your office now see how you can use your office to promote policies or to enact laws or to allow the church to grow you can be a priest even if you are a king let us now look at our readings for today after which we shall uh, say some 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 things more about the gospel passage our first reading is taken from the first book of the kings first kings chapter 8 verse 22 to 23 27 to 30. in those days solomon stood before the altar of the lord in the presence of all the assembly of israel and spread forth his hands towards heaven and said o lord god of israel there is no god like you in heaven above or on earth beneath keeping covenant and showing mercy to your servants who walk before you with all their hearts but will god indeed dwell on the earth behold heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you how much less this house which i have built yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication O Lord, my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer which your servant offers towards this place, and listen to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel. When they pray towards this place, yes, hear in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. The Gospel, the Word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! Even the sparrow finds our home, and the swallow a nest for herself, in which she sets her young at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! Blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Turn your eyes, O Lord, O God, our shield, Look on the face of your anointed. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. The threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts! Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reign it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reign it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Bend my heart, O God, to your decrees. Grant me mercy by your law. Hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 7 verse 1 to 13. At that time, when the Pharisees gathered together to Jesus, with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many other traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold fast to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, what you have gained from me is Koban, that is, giving to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition which you hold, which you hand on, and many such things you do. The word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Mary. Already, we have spoken about our first reading, the fact that Solomon prayed. Solomon virtually stood in the place of a priest to pray a prayer of dedication over the temple, imploring God to hack into the prayers that will be said in the temple, imploring God to hear the cries of the people, to grant their requests and to forgive their sins. In our gospel passage, there is an encounter between Jesus and the scribes who have come from Jerusalem. The question in this gospel passage that we all need to ask ourselves is can we worship God in vain is it possible to worship God in vain that is is it possible that after all our activities in church after the fact that some of us even hold positions in church some of us are lay readers church wardens some of us are priests, religious, consecrated men and women, you know, bishops, popes. I mean, I, there's only one pope, sorry. Uh, I mean, after all the fact that we are zona leader, uh, we are CWO chairman, uh, you know, after the fact that now we the open church, you know, now we see the close arm. After the fact that we spend time in church, about the fact that we 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 preach in the name of God, is it possible that after all these things that we do, we could still 
end up in the same place as non-believers, as those who never one day even pray to God, yes, yes, it is possible. It's possible to worship God in vain. It's possible that at the end of my life as a priest, I could end up in hellfire. It's possible. It's real. It's possible that after all that I have done, I will still be among those that Jesus will say, I do not know you. Jesus Christ told us, he says, I tell you, many will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the householder has risen up and shut the door, you will begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. He will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There you will weep and gnash your teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves trust out. Luke 13, 24 to 28. This is real. It is very possible to worship God in vain. It is very possible that despite our familiarity with God, despite our seemingly closeness to God, that we would end up our life and find out we are not worthy to be in the presence of God. Now the next question is, how how do we worship god in vain by cleansing the outside of the cup while leaving the inside dirty in other words we worship god in vain when we practice a false spirituality when all that we do is just for a show or when we live in pretense, we worship God in vain when we live by the eleventh commandment, never get caught. You know, many Christians today, they just believe that as long as people do not know the evils that they do, they are all right. It is as if to say, for many Christians, God is imprisoned in church such that they have this unconscious belief or somehow something tells them that the moment the mass is ended, the moment the service, the church service is ended and they walk out of the church, it's like they leave God behind. Uh, it's like they, they just believe that Okay, now I'm no longer in church. Now I can be I can become the baddest possible I can be. When I go back to church, I can easily wash my hands at the entrance of the church. I can easily go to confession. After all, I can always go to confession. I mean it's just easy now. It's not just to confess and that's all. And your sins are forgiven. Ah well the things that a lot of us do in secret are things that we cannot even speak with our mouth. So when we deceive God, we are actually worshipping God in vain. Of course, it's not possible to deceive God. We only deceive ourselves. We only deceive others. We give others the impression that because we are wearing white outside, then we are white inside. But God knows. God knows what is inside. Jesus Christ was not happy with the Pharisees. Because according to them, the disciples of Jesus ought to have washed. 
they ought to have done purification before they started eating. Meanwhile, that which was more important to be washed, the inside was not washed. And Jesus Christ called them hypocrites. He called them white wash tombs. Today, many of us are concerned only about what people will say about me. We are concerned about what people will think about me. We are not concerned about what God, my creator, before whom nothing is hidden, would say about me. How sad. We worship God in vain when we disregard the commandments of God all for the sake of human customs or traditions. Jesus Christ gave an example of how parents are neglected all in the name of Koban. A child will say to his father and mother, um, everything that you ought to have collected from me or everything that you ought to have gained from me, I have dedicated it to God. So therefore, I am no longer under any obligation to take care of you. That is, that, is, that is actually going against the fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother goes beyond respecting your parents. It also involves having to take care of your parents. Child of God, it is a commandment of God to take care of your parents. This is something that needs to be drummed into the ears of many of us Christians today. It is a commandment of God to take care of your parents, especially when they are old, especially when they can no longer fend for themselves. Visit your parents. Stay with them. Help them. Pay hospital bills for them. Take care of their health. Be there for them. Ensure that they enjoy their old age. You will receive their blessing. Your own life will be long. Your life will not be cut short. Take care of your parents. Because it, 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 is a, it is a contradiction to say what you ought to have given to your parents. You are giving it to God. Someone once asked me, is it possible to pay tithes, tithes to one's parents? I say, of course. If your conscience tells you that your parents are in need, and you you have a percentage of your sweat or your income send it to your parents if you can send it to the priest and believe that the priest will bless you you can also send it to your parents let your parents bless you give them your tithe i mean take care of them take care of them you see sometimes we have a wrong uh, or uh, a, a wrong understanding of god's word a wrong interpretation of God's word. And it could so happen that we could end up promoting human traditions and forgetting the true spirit of the law. What is the spirit of the law? What is the spirit of God's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself? It is not possible, as St. John tells us, to love God whom you have not seen when you do not love your neighbor whom you see. So it is not possible to say, uh, I am worshipping God, I am giving God my tithe. When your parents are there suffering and you cannot even help with a cover, you cannot say you are loving God and yet you are failing to love your parents. You are failing to love your fellow brothers and sisters whom you see every day. Some children today, they have refused to forgive their parents. But whatever their parents did to them, either, for instance, you see some children taking care of only their father, ignoring their mother. You also see some, some children taking care of only their mother, ignoring their father. Why? And we say we are Christians. You see, there are so many things we do, so many things that we do that even though we still go to church, on the last day, God will judge us. So our gospel passage today calls for an examination of conscience. Are there things that I am doing in the name of religion? Are there things that I am doing that 
God is not happy about? Let us examine our heart very well. Let us try to answer this question. Even as I go to church, are there things I do in secret that I know my conscience tells me that these things are not right? And yet every day I am in church, I am in front of church. Everybody is seeing me in church. Everybody thinks that I am good, yet I am bad. Repent. I mean, walk out of darkness. Walk as a child of the light. You may be whatever position in the church, whatever position you are. You think that the people of God do not know what you do in secret. And yet you are in church every day. Please, one day, all your evil deeds will come out to the light and you'll have nowhere to run to. But you don't have to wait for that day. Start today. No matter what you have done in the past, no matter how many times you have fallen, start today. Begin to walk as a child of the light. Forget about every other person around you. Even if you have no role models around you, you become a role model first to yourself and then before to others. Walk as a child of the light. Come out of hypocrisy. Come out of darkness. Do the things that will please God. And your blessings will never depart from you. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the wisdom to use whatever position we find ourselves in the society. Be it civil leader, be it king or people organizer. To use our office to promote our religion. We also pray that we may no longer live hypocritical lives doing things just to show, but actually worshipping God in spirit and in truth. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for listening. God bless you. Be happy. Live positive. It is well with you.